This video shows the TI calculator steps to find the five number summary and a box plot. We'll be working from module 2C, group work question 2 on page 52. So we're going to use the Barry Bonds data. And so if we go into stat and press enter to edit, we're going to put our data in list 1. So the first step is to clear out list 1. So we arrow up, highlight list 1, press clear, and enter, and that clears out the entire list. So we're now going to enter the data for Barry Bonds. This data is given on page 52 in the activity packet. The number 25 comes up twice, so it's important to make sure that you enter it twice. We don't want to skip any numbers. The same thing, the number 33, for 33 home runs, comes up twice, meaning there were two years where Barry Bonds hit 33 home runs. All right, we have all of our data entered, so we should have 22 data points in here. And so now we're going to go to Stat, and we're going to arrow over to Calculate. And the first choice under Calculate is one variable statistics. Since Barry Bonds is the only variable we're looking at, we want to choose one variable statistics. So we click Enter. And then we want to make sure our list is in L1. You can leave frequency blank or type in a 1. We only want to count the list once, so don't put in any other numbers. And then we press Enter to calculate. And you can see the very first number, the X with the bar that it gives us, is the average. And then these numbers in between are calculations that we'll be using later on in the semester. Uh, the sigma X is the sum of all the X values. Sigma x squared is called the sum of the squares. So they square each home run and then add it up. S sub x is the sample standard deviation. So it tells us how much the graph shifts in a sample. And lowercase sigma x is the population standard deviation. So for a population, this tells us how much the graph is stretched or compressed. N is 22, meaning we had 22 entries. And if we scroll down, we can see the five number summary here. So here's our minimum x value, which was five. Quartile one is 25. The median is 34. Quartile three is 45. And the max is 73. Now I want to make a box plot. So to make a box plot, I'm going to go into window. And I have to set my x values to match the values that we saw. So the least number of home runs Barry Bonds had was 5, so it's okay to leave my x min at 5, a little bit below. But Barry Bonds hit 73 home runs one year, so we need to make sure our x max goes all the way up to 75 or even a little bit higher is okay. And then we want to choose an x scale. I'm going to choose 10 as the x scale. That's going to put the tick marks on the graph. We don't need to worry about the y values down here because we're just doing a graph of the data we put in the x values. So now our next step is to turn stat plot on. So we're going to go second y equals and choose stat plot. And I have plot 1 still on on my calculator. Make sure plot 1 is on on your calculator. If not, when you press enter, you can turn it on. So see how on is highlighted here? That tells me on is the plot is on in my calculator. 
So I want to choose a box plot. I'm going to come down and choose this box plot here. If you want to choose a box plot that shows outliers, you could choose the first box plot graph. But I'm going to arrow down and choose the box plot without the outliers on it. And then my X list is in L1, so I'm going to leave that the same. And my frequency is just one, meaning I'm just counting the list once. So then we're going to say, we can say enter or we can scroll down and click on graph. So now if we come up to graph, here is our box plot for Barry Bonds. Suppose we also want to graph Babe Ruth side by side. Then I'm going to go back into stat. I'm going to press enter to edit. And in list two, I'm going to enter the data from Babe Ruth. So he had 22 home runs, 25. So I'm going to enter the data from all 15 years that he played. And again, down here, my calculator screen is showing the key press history. It's just the list of the numbers I've typed and when I've pressed enter. Okay, so now that Babe Ruth is in list two, I'm gonna go back into stat plot. So I'm pressing second y equals key. And I'm gonna scroll down and turn plot two on. So it's currently on off, so I'm gonna highlight on and press enter. And then under type, I'm gonna choose the same box plot style that I chose before. Except now when they ask for the X list, I wanna put list two. So list two is in blue above the two key, so I'm gonna press second and the two key and here pops up list two. Make sure you leave your frequency at one because we don't want to count the list more than once. And now if I go back to graph, I get the side-by-side -side box plots. So I know Barry Bonds was the first box plot I plotted and Babe Ruth is the second box plot. So your sketches on page 52 should look something like this, although you probably rotated your sketches. If I wanted to know the five number summary for Babe Ruth, I could go back into stat Back over to calc. I'm still going to choose one variable statistics because Babe Ruth is the variable I'm interested in now. And I'm going to change my list from list one to list two. So I'm going to press second and the two key. And then arrow down to calculate. Press enter. And here are the one variable statistics for Babe Ruth. So again, this is his average or mean number of home runs. And if we scroll down, n means he had 15 data points. And our five number summary has a min of 22, quartile 1 is 35, the median is 46, quartile 3 is 54, and the max is 60.